everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie. I make videos about knitting, fiber arts, yarn, all that good stuff. So I have a project that needs to be blocked. And it occurred to me that I've done some TikToks and reels showing my blocking process, but I've never really shown it properly on YouTube and done like a comprehensive video where I show you my entire blocking process from start to finish, talk in detail about what I'm actually doing, what I'm using, and really showing the difference between the before and after, which is like one of my favorite like transformations is a knit before and after it's been blocked, especially a knit like the one that I'm gonna be blocking today. So if you are someone who either A, has never blocked anything before and is like, well, what are you talking about? What is this blocking business? Or you may have never done it before, but you know what it is and you just are in the camp of, I don't need a block, blocking is above me, none of that nonsense. Or if you are just interested to see how I go about blocking my knits. If you're someone who blocks regularly, it might be different to the way that you do it, but I always find it interesting to see how other people do things. So stick around if you tick any of those boxes or if you're just, you're just curious and want to hang out. So to start off, I will show you the piece that I am going to be blocking. This is it before. I will try it on in a minute so you can see how it fits before and after. But this is a new design of mine that I don't have a name for at the moment. And I think I'm gonna do a knitting podcast soon once I've blocked this and another piece that I wanna show. So I'll talk more in detail about the actual design and everything in that video. But yeah, it's a tee and it has a really cute lace detailing along the sleeve and bottom edges. That is the main reason I wanted to actually show you this process is because whilst blocking is always beneficial and will always, I feel like, elevate your knits and make them look 10 times better. When you are doing lace work, which this pattern obviously includes, it is it is essential. It is not an option not to block, in my opinion. Like when you see the before and after of this, like I already know because I've blocked the swatch for this lace pattern and the difference is insane. And if you are not convinced by the end of this video that you need to block every single thing you make, especially lace pieces, I have done something wrong. So hopefully I achieve my goals of converting all of you to the blocking side because don't worry, I was you once. I used to not do it. I used to stay as far away as I could, but once you do it, you can't go back. So anyway, that is the main transformation I think we're gonna see in this video. You can see how the stitches, I mean, I hope you can tell. They're very like crumply. There's a lot of like texture that I don't want. This is a lace pattern, not a textured pattern, but that's just kind of what happens before blocking. Like there's weird tension issues and the blocking really helps to smooth it out and really open up those eyelets so that you can actually see the pattern. They are meant to be little lace hearts, but like I said, I really don't know how you could never really tell that. Like just from looking at this right now, you'd never be like, yeah, those are hearts. Like that's that's what this is, but I hope, fingers crossed, once this is blocked, it will be a lot more obvious. Right now, it just looks like I've got like little ruffled edges, which is not the goal. I mean, it is cute, but it's not the goal. And then also, obviously, aside from the lace, I want this to just like have a bit more drape. Like I said, I'm gonna show you it tried on in a minute. Maybe I'll do that now. <laughs> All right, so this is how the piece is fitting right now before blocking. It does fit me, so it's not a matter of whether or not it's gonna fit, especially for this piece, which has got quite a bit of positive ease, so, that's not really the main issue here. It's more just that it doesn't have much drape. It's very, I don't even know the right word, but just like, it's kind of like a bit stiff and just not, it's not what we want. I want like a nice, like loose flowy t-shirt, you know, drapey, just something that like sits really, really nicely and looks really neat as well. Something that I find blocking really helps, especially for pieces that I make because my tension's not always perfect. I've definitely quite all over the place when it comes to tension, but I find that blocking really helps just like smooth out my stitches and make my tension look way better than it actually is. And then also I might want to try and just like stretch out this neckline a little bit just so that it's a little bit more open, but it does have an eye cord. So I'm not imagining that blocking is going to do a ton to the neckline because eye cords don't tend to stretch it that much. But if we can get a little bit more of a neckline going on, that'd be great. And then yeah, obviously just smoothing out these lace edges and I do imagine it's going to grow a little bit because I did block my swatch and it did grow a bit but I'm not going to stretch it out a ton because I am quite happy with the, the fit of this as it is so I don't want it to be too much bigger. So this is kind of how it is right now you can see where it's sitting it's just kind of I mean it's curling obviously but imagine it wasn't curling it would probably be sitting just around where the button is of my jeans. But yeah I'm just going to be taking you through my process. There's many different ways that you can block your knits. 
I tend to just always wet block. It's pretty rare that I will do anything else. I just find that to be the most effective method. And I kind of find it just kills two birds with one stone because as you'll see, it's basically just washing your project, which you should be doing after you finish it because your project has been in many different places. It's been, firstly, your hands have been touching it. And unless you're washing your hands before every single time you knit, which I assume most people don't, you know, your hands have been all over and then that's getting onto the project. It's been in bags. It may have been on the floor, on a train. I don't know. It depends on where you knit, to be honest, but definitely seen a few surfaces or two or three. So it makes sense to wash your project before you wear it because you want it to be nice and clean before you wear it. And assuming you're going to wash it again <laughs> because you're going to wear it and you know, you should be washing things that you wear. At some point, your project's gonna have to get wet and you're gonna have to do this process. So that's kind of how I see it. Cause I get a lot of comments on videos where I'm showing the before and after of blocking or I'm showing the process of blocking. And a lot of people say, do you have to block it every time you wash it? And I would say, no, not really. You don't have to be like doing all the pinning that I'm gonna be doing. It really depends on the piece, but it is essentially the same process. It's just that the first time you do it is really like the time where you'll see the most difference, obviously, because there's a before and an after, if that makes sense. That's kind of my take on it. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to answer questions that haven't actually been asked to me in this video. So let's just get on with it. This is the before. Just take one last look at it before it enters the bath. Yeah, we'll get straight to it. I will see you in my laundry. Okay, welcome to my laundry. Sorry about the fact that I'm being backlit right now. We don't currently have curtains. So this is, this is the best I'm gonna get, unfortunately. Hopefully it's not too bright and crazy, but let's just get straight into it. So of course I've got my, God, it looks crazy in this light, but I've got my top. And behind me, I have one of my favorite blocking tools is definitely not essential, but something that I really enjoy using. And this is the Strucket. It's a strainer bucket. So essentially there are two compartments, one with holes. So it's a strainer and one is basically just a bucket. And it has some really cool functions, which I'll show you kind of as I go. But this is what I use to soak whatever I'm blocking. You can definitely use a sink. You can definitely just use a normal bucket or kind of large bowl. You can soak it in whatever you want, really. I avoid the sink personally, just because when you're washing something, you want to make sure it's clean. And I don't know, I'll sink down here. My, my dog gets washed in there, like all sorts of things go on in there. So I prefer to just know that what I'm blocking it in is already clean. So yeah, this is obviously really easy to clean. And yeah, I, I just use this, but yeah, you really can just use the sink. So it's really up to you. So yeah, that's the first thing you're gonna need. The second is wool wash. You can also use any wool wash that's accessible to you. I use this homemade wool wash from Woolen Works. I'm covering up the uh, name of the scent because it's a new one that she hasn't come out with yet. So I don't wanna spoil that, but it's my favorite one that she's done so far. I use this one, but honestly, like, like I said, any wool wash that's like, meant for washing delicate fabrics and fibers will do. So that's basically all I use for the steps. So let's get straight into it. So we're just gonna start by filling up the bucket with warm water. And I'm also gonna add the wool wash to the bucket as it's being filled up. I've got to give this one a good shake before I add any wool wash. You don't need a lot, um, just a little, I just do a little squeeze, that'll do. You wanna make sure the water is warm and not hot. You want to be able to, to touch it comfortably. Okay, so now that the bucket has been filled up, I like to go just like a little over halfway. I just put it in the water. So... I find this like the most satisfying part. All right, you really wanna make sure it gets fully submerged. So I like to just like give it a few squeezes. And the cool thing about the strucket as well is I'll demonstrate it now, but you can kind of like pull up and then push it back in. I feel like this just really ensures that the fibers are fully, you know, agitated. But, like I said, if you don't have a strucket, you'll, you'll be fine. 
So now that I've done that a few times, we're basically just gonna let this soak for 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't matter too much, but somewhere within that range uh, is perfectly fine. I am gonna set a timer. And I highly recommend that if you are ever blocking your nits, you do the same because it is very easy to be like, yeah, yeah, I'll come back to it. And then three hours later, you realize that you've completely forgotten. And if you leave it soaking for too long, it's, it's not going to be good for you. You're going to end up with a piece that could potentially grow a lot more <laughs> than you desired. So I'm going to set my timer right now for 15 minutes. I mean, it's already on there because I feel like I'm always blocking things. Here we go. And I'll come back to you in 15 minutes. Okay, hi, it's been 15 minutes. It's now time to let the water out. So I'm gonna show you how I do that with the strucket. Obviously, if you don't have a strucket, you just pull the plug out, <laughs> you know, common sense. So basically we start by pulling up I'm trying to get the best view, pull up, and then there's like a little bit where you can, I don't know, I can't think of the right words right now, but you can basically set this up like this. So the water goes out and to drain the water, so we're going to have the edge of the strucket sit slightly over the sink. And then there's like a little drain you just pull out and it's just, just empties. I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting the full, the full experience. So I'm just gonna let that, let that happen. Okay, I just put it in the sink just so that I can get this on camera more. But yeah, I'm basically just pressing as much of the water out as I can before I actually lift it up. And I'm just gonna squeeze out the water as much as I can, but it's super important you don't wring any of the water out, okay? You're not gonna be doing any twisting or wringing. You're just gently squeezing um, as much as you can before we actually are gonna use a towel, but as much as you can um, just with your hands is, is good. So, I have to really flex my muscles. And I really just try and make sure I've, I've like kind of put it into like some few different positions so I can get little bits that may have water. Okay, I think that's as much water as I'm going to be able to get out of this. So we're going to move on to the next step. So this next step is going to involve a towel. I try to use a towel that is fairly thick just so that I can get as much water out as possible and basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lay out the piece flat on the towel I mean you can already see <laughs> hopefully actually you can't see anything let me try to show you yeah. <laughs> there we go <laughs> so we're gonna lay the piece on the towel and we are gonna roll it up nice and tight all the way. Now for my favorite part where we're just gonna step step on it. I like to do lots of different angles. Ooh, I've got to make sure that's all the way tucked in there. Sometimes I like to like rock back and forth just to make sure I'm really pressing as much water out as possible. Do a little dance. <laughs> Once you've done that, you're just going to, where is it? We're gonna just pull it out of the towel. Okay, and at this point, the piece should obviously be quite a bit lighter and, you know, not be dripping with water. So I'm gonna take this back upstairs and get to the fun part. So for this step, you're gonna need some mats, ideally. You can use a towel, but I find it doesn't dry as quick because the towel just absorbs the water and it's not the most effective, but I did used to use towels before I had mats, so you just might have to wait a little bit longer for it to dry. But ideally, you can get some blocking mats. I have ones with grid lines. These were a bit on the pricier side, but I've heard that like kids' play mats are 
just as effective. You basically just want ones that are like interlocking like this. I have two sets, so each set comes with four. I think I should only need four of these today for this t-shirt, but I just have extras because I find that when I'm blocking a big jumper, I need more than four. So we'll see how we go, but this doesn't have long sleeves, so I think I'll be all right. But yeah, so that's the first thing you're gonna need. And then you're also going to need some pins. You can use single pins. I personally actually don't have any of those, but you know, the kind of pins that have like a little ball on the end or a little like line, you can use those. But I find that using these rainbow knit blockers from Knit Pro, I'm sure there are a bunch of other brands out there, but these are just the ones that I have that are most accessible to me. I find these to be super, super helpful. It comes in like this beautiful rainbow set. And basically it just has a bunch of pins all combined. And you've got these big sizes and then you've also got these little ones here. Once again, I actually have two boxes of these because I am obsessed with pinning. I like to pin literally every single edge because I just get scared that like one little bit will like kind of curl in and I just don't want that, but you definitely probably don't need to be pinning things as much as I do, but I just, I just like to do it. So we're gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna show you how these work, how the mats work, how I kind of make sure that the shape is correct and the measurements are correct. We're gonna go through it all. All right, so you just wanna start by setting these up. So I think I'm gonna need some extra mats. So let me just see if I add these two, how how we're gonna how we're gonna be looking. Mm. I'm gonna have to measure to make sure that I'm hitting my measurements correctly. But I want to say this looks like this will fit. Okay. So. We've put it on the mat. Now, we could just leave it there, uh, but I like to be extra precise about my shaping and really make sure that everything's perfect. And obviously with these lace sections, I wanna make sure that those have been kind of opened up as much as possible and pinned out. So there's no real like specific like steps that I follow, but I kind of, it's kind of just like a feel thing, but I kind of just start by kind of moving it around and just kind of, I don't want, if I don't want to stretch it too much, I kind of have to like, just pat it like gently, just to kind of bring the stitches back in, but obviously you don't want to like scrunch it. So yeah, I just kind of like pat, pat it, pat, 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 and that kind of relaxes everything a little bit more, isn't, is making sure everything isn't too stretched, unless I'm wanting to stretch the living daylights out of it, then I will do that. <laughs> but that's not what we want to do today. The one thing you want to keep in mind when you are blocking is especially if you are trying to reach a certain measurement, when you stretch it lengthways, it's going to shorten the width and vice versa. So if you're stretching it widthways, then it's going to shorten the length. So that's just something to keep in mind. So remember I mentioned before that I wanted to make sure the neckline was a little bit wider and maybe a little bit deeper. So I'm paying extra attention to that when I'm kind of shifting things around, but I still want my stitches to be nice and to need not too stretched out. So I'm just kind of keeping all that in mind. Then I obviously just want everything to be nice and smooth. You want to make sure the back is the same length as the front. The grid lines I find really help just to make sure that, you know, your work is straight and that it's not on some weird, weird angles or whatever. But like I said, if you don't have them, it's, it's really not that big a deal. I'm paying specific close attention right now to my raglan stitches because those I feel like is where my tension kind of was probably the most wonky. So I'm just really trying to like push those together just to make sure that there's no like holes or just any stitches that aren't looking the best. We'll get to the pinning in a minute, but I like to make sure everything is looking perfect before we pin it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So now before I pin it, I just wanna make sure I'm hitting the correct measurements. So if you're following a pattern, the best place to find the measurements is in the pattern. Depending on the pattern, it will give you a range of measurements that you should be aiming for. And I find those to be specifically useful when blocking because sometimes blocking can blow things a bit out of proportion if you like stretch one bit too much. So that's what you should do if you're following a pattern. I, like I said, I'm designing this piece. I did not use a pattern for this. This is my own design, but I did write out my design measurements beforehand. So I'm gonna just make sure that I'm hitting those um, or as close to those measurements as possible. So just get my measuring tape, obviously. I 
think overall this is probably stretched a little more than I wanted to. So I'm just gonna push it in a little bit more. close enough. So now that we've done that, we're going to get to the real fun part and that is pinning. So I'm going to maybe bring you a little bit closer. So I'm aiming to kind of have this edge sit along this line here. So if I have to make it a little bit longer just so that this lace really kind of spreads out like I would like it to, then I will. But for now, that's where I'm going for. So I really want to make sure everything is nice and flat. Make sure I've gotten with the front and the back sections. Just gonna pin that down. And then we're just gonna do the same all the way across. This really helps to prevent curling, especially at the bottom. So pinning the bottom of your work, I would say is definitely the most important part, like any kind of cast on edges or cast off edges that you have, that you find are curling, you definitely should be pinning those down. So I've pinned the bottom section. I'm gonna go ahead and do the sleeves next just because I feel like these edges are the most important part. I'm just gonna take the pin, make sure the front and back is the same length. I'm finding these edges a little bit more difficult to pin down than normal. I think that's just because the lace pattern starts like right at the edge. So it's just like a little bit harder because it's curling up a little bit more than it normally would, but yeah, I'm just trying to be extra precise. Right, now I'm just gonna do the same on the other side. So I've done all of the edges. I've really tried to make sure that the lace pattern is you know, as visible and looks right, which I think it does. So I'm just gonna, gonna pull out these last little bits, just make sure everything is nice and straight and even. And I'll just add some pins along the edges just to, to keep the shape. line as well I don't always do this but because this is an eye cord I just I don't know I kind of just want to keep the edges as neat as possible so all right as you can see I use so many pins but I don't know I just find it I find it extra satisfying once I've pinned everything down, I just do one last little pat, 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 just to make sure everything is sitting nicely within the pins. This won't change the shape too much, but really just to kind of neaten up the stitches and make sure there's consistency. It's looking pretty good to me. So I think I'm ready to just let it dry basically. So it's been two days of waiting for this bad boy to Dry. I'm not gonna lie, I was so tempted yesterday to just take it off the blocking mat because the front definitely felt dry by the end of the day, but I didn't wanna take the risk because often I'll get too excited, get too ahead of myself and I'll take it off the blocking mat and then the back isn't dry. And yes, I could always just turn it around, but I don't know, I just thought, have some patience and wait an extra day. This is like genuinely the most <laughs> like frustrating part of blocking, especially when it's colder out, like, it's the middle of autumn for me, so I'm relying on my heating system to get this thing dried. And it has dried pretty quick. I actually find that this yarn, which I completely forgot to even say at the start. This always happens to me. I always forget something super important when I'm filming. Yeah, this is 100% merino wool. It's hand dyed yarn from Woolen Works. It's an old colorway. The colorway is Rufus. 
just so that just so that you know I'm sorry that it took me until this point in the video to to say that so i find that this yarn dries pretty quickly not the quickest there's definitely yarns i find like mohair dries super super fast but because it's pretty thin it's dk weight so it dries pretty quickly but yeah i just thought i'd wait one extra day i'm pretty confident that it should be dry enough now so let's hope we, we should hopefully be able to do a, a try on to show you the finished product Always be careful when dealing with these pins. They are incredibly sharp and uh, I may or may not have just scratched my finger and caused it to bleed a little bit. Battle scars, I guess, but yeah, be more careful than I clearly just was. Okay, so moment of truth. Okay, that feels, that feels pretty dry to me. I'm glad I waited the extra day. Here is the after. Beautiful. Time to try it on. Okay, so this is the after. Hopefully you can tell a difference. I might even insert a clip here quickly of the before. So this is how the piece is fitting right now before blocking. Hopefully you can see a difference. So I've got to kind of like stand on my tippy toes a little bit, but hopefully you can see this beautiful heart stitch has fully, you know, blocked out, opened up and smoothed out and it's so, so stunning. Something I really was trying to achieve with this top was a nice, loose, flowy summer t-shirt, you know, something that has a good amount of positive ease so that there's room to breathe in the warmer months, especially since this is made with merino wool, as I said. And yeah, I'm particularly happy with how the neckline has blocked out. I think it took me three or four attempts to even get the neckline to a place where I was happy with it pre-blocking, but I was really hoping that post-blocking it would kind of smooth out some of those decreases and the eye cord and then also just like open it up a little bit and deepen it and it's done exactly that and I feel like it is the perfect like feminine look that I was trying to achieve and I'm just really really happy with this especially considering it took so many attempts to get it to look like this so very happy with that yeah I hope this video was interesting and I hope you learned something if you are either new to knitting or new to blocking I tried to be pretty thorough with the amount of information that I included but if you have any lingering questions about blocking in general or any specific parts of the process that I showed in this video feel free to leave a comment down below and either myself or someone else with a lot of experience with blocking should hopefully be able to help you out if you like this video make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're not already as of filming this video I I am about 30 subscribers away from 5,000 subscribers. So if you weren't already subscribed and wanted to help me get to 5,000, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm hopefully gonna get a testing call out for this design super soon. So if you're interested in testing it, then make sure you're following all my social media, especially my Instagram, where I post all my testing calls. You can also sign up to my mailing list by just clicking the link for my website. There'll be a little pop-up that comes up and I email out all my tester calls as well if you're on my mailing list. So in case the Instagram algorithm doesn't show you the tester call, you won't miss it. That's all for this video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.